Good afternoon, everyone. If you're just now joining us, we are reading a couple poems from The New Kid on the Block by Jack Prolepke today. My copy is actually two books in one, but we'll only be reading from the New Kid on the Block side of things today. So I will be showing the illustrations a little bit, but they are um, just pretty small and black and white. But whenever there is an illustration to go with the poem, I'll show that too. And the illustrations are by James Stevenson. Poems are by Jack Prolepsky. If you have never read Jack Prolepsky before, he is one of my very favorite poets for children. He has all these silly poems and a lot of them have wordplay and they're funny. So he's one of my favorites. Funny poems are my favorite poems. So we'll start with the poem that the book title comes from. It's called The New Kid on the Block. There's a new kid on the block and boy, that kid is tough. That new kid punches hard. That new kid plays real rough. That new kid's big and strong with muscles everywhere. That new kid tweaked my arm. That new kid pulled my hair. That new kid likes to fight and picks on all the guys. That new kid scares me some. That new kid is twice my size. That new kid stomped my toes. That new kid swiped my ball. That new kid's really bad. I don't care for her at all. Did you know the new kid was a girl? Sometimes when I read this poem to students, they're surprised by that. They think the new kid is going to be a boy. And then it's a little surprise at the end. A lot of poems have a little surprise at the end. That's another thing I like about them. This one is called, I wonder why dad is so thoroughly mad. If you're thoroughly mad, that means you're really, really mad all the way throughout your body. Thoroughly mad. I wonder why dad is so thoroughly mad. I can't understand it at all. Unless it's the bee still afloat in his tea or his underwear pinned to the wall. Perhaps it's the dye on his favorite tie or the mouse trap snapped in his shoe or the pipe full of gum that he found with his thumb or the toilet sealed tightly with glue. It can't be the bread crumbled up in his bed or the slugs someone left in the hall. I wonder why dad is so thoroughly mad. I can't understand it at all. Why do you think the dad was so mad? Would you be mad if someone glued your toilet shut? I think I would be. You need to have an iron rear. Do you know what iron is? It's a really hard metal. You need to have an iron rear. You need to have an iron rear to sit upon a cactus or otherwise, at least a year of very painful practice. Do you think it would take a year to get you used to sitting on a cactus? I think that's what they're implying. I like this one because a lot of times poems wonder about something or ask a question or kind of investigate a random thought that you might have. So this one is called, Do Oysters Sneeze? Do oysters sneeze beneath the seas or wiggle to and fro or sulk or smile or dance a while? How can we ever know? Do oysters yawn when roused at dawn? And do they ever weep? And can we tell when in its shell an oyster is 
asleep. I don't know. Can we tell if an oyster is asleep? Okay, this one is one of my very favorite poems of all time. So there's hardly any illustrations, but it's a really fun one. It's called Bleezer's Ice Cream. Do you like ice cream? Me too. See if you like the flavors in this poem. I am Ebenezer Bleezer. I run Bleezer's Ice Cream Store. There are flavors in my freezer you have never seen before. 28 divine creations, too delicious to resist. Why not do yourself a favor? Try the flavors on my list. Coco Mocha Macaroni, Tapioca Smoked Bologna, Checkerberry Cheddar Chew, Chicken Cherry Honeydew, Tutti Frutti Stewed Tomato, Tuna Taco Baked Potato, Lab Lobster Litchi Lima Bean, Mozzarella Mango Steam, Almond Ham Meringue Salami, Yam Anchovy Prune Pastrami, Sassafras Souvlaki Hash, Sukiyaki Succotash, Butter Brickle Pepper Pickle, Pomegranate Pumpernickel, Peach Pimento Pizza Plum, Peanut Pumpkin Bubble Gum, Broccoli Banana Bluster, Chocolate Chop Suey Cluster, Avocado Brussels Sprout, Periwinkle Sauerkraut, Cotton Candy Carrot Custard, Cauliflower Cola Mustard, Onion Dumpling Double Dip, Turnip Truffle Triple Flip, Garlic Gumbo Gravy Guava, Lentil Lemon Liver Lava, Orange Olive Bagel Beet, Watermelon Waffle Wheat. I am Ebenezer Bleezer. I run Bleezer's Ice Cream Store. Taste a flavor from my freezer? You will surely ask for more. I don't know. I don't know, Ebenezer Bleezer, if I would like to have one of those flavors. Maybe the watermelon waffle wheat. That one doesn't sound terrible. But all of those names are fun to say. I like those. This is a good one for the times that we are living in because all of our schoolwork is homework now. So this is called homework. Oh, homework. Homework. Oh, homework. I hate you. You stink! I wish I could wash you away in the sink. If only a bomb would explode you to bits. Homework. Oh, homework. You're giving me fits. I'd rather take baths with a man-eating shark or wrestle a lion alone in the dark. Eat spinach and liver pet 10 porcupines, then tackle the homework my teacher assigns. Homework, oh homework, you're last on my list. I simply can't see why you even exist. If you just disappeared, it would tickle me pink. Homework, oh homework, I hate you, you see? Hopefully you don't really feel that way about the schoolwork you're doing at home, but if you do, this poem can be a healthy outlet for you. Maybe you can write your own homework poem if you don't like having to do work at home for school. This is going to be, we'll read two more. This is not how I really feel about my dog but this poem is called, My Dog, He is an Ugly Dog. My dog is cute, but I do love him as much as the kid in this poem. My dog, he is an ugly dog. He's put together wrong. 
His legs are much too short for him. His ears are much too long. My dog, he's a scruffy dog. He's missing clumps of hair. His face is quite ridiculous. His tail is scarcely there. My dog, he is a dingy dog. His fur is full of fleas. He sometimes smells like dirty socks. He sometimes <laughs> smells like cheese. My dog, he is a noisy dog. He's hardly ever still. He barks at almost anything. His voice is loud and shrill. My dog, he's a stupid dog. His mind is slow and thick. He's never learned to catch a ball. He cannot fetch a stick. My dog, he is a greedy dog. He eats enough for three. His belly bulges to the ground. He is the dog for me. So even though that dog has so many issues, the speaker of the poem still loves him. Okay, this will be the last one that we read today. It's called, Be Glad Your Nose Is On Your Face. Would you like it if your nose were on your foot? What about on the top of your head? Would that be a good place for your nose? No? We'll see what the poem says about it. Be glad your nose is on your face, not pasted on some other place. For if it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Imagine if your precious nose were sandwiched in between your toes. That clearly would not be a treat, for you'd be forced to smell your feet. Your nose would be a source of dread were it attached atop your head. It soon would drive you for to despair, forever tickled by your hair. Within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe. For when you were obliged to sneeze, your brain would rattle from the breeze. Your nose, instead, through thick and thin, remains between your eyes and chin, not pasted on some other place. Be glad your nose is on your face. And I am glad my nose is on my face, and I hope you are too. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this is not even close to all the poems in this book. There are hundreds of them. I'm not sure if this book in particular is available as an ebook, but you, if you're inspired to read some more poetry books, um, look on Epic and Sora and you can just search poetry and you will come up with a lot of good examples from other poets. And on Epic they even have videos of poetry where they put the words together with music and pictures and even animations. So I hope you enjoyed the new kid on the block and this video will be available after the fact. If you didn't get to watch the whole thing, I will post it on Facebook and it will be archived on the Prairie Point Library page. So thanks for joining to the live read aloud or thanks for watching if you are watching this later after the fact. Have a great afternoon everybody and happy National Poetry Month. Go read some poetry. Go write some poetry. Be creative. Celebrate National Poetry Month. Okay, bye. Have a great afternoon.